Local legends have it that the spirits of the ancient Chamorro people roam the jungles of the Mariana Islands. Some say these spirits wander with an unresolved purpose. Some say these spirits can cause extreme harm to the unsuspecting. Some of the stories we've heard include people that have died from mysterious illnesses. Others have said they've encountered these apparitions but many more have said they've discounted these stories as if they were tomorrow folklore. But the question is, do you believe? Welcome to the Tata Mona Tales. Nestled quietly in the hills of Santa Rita is the Agagi home. It's where 73-year-old Julia Agagi shares with us her stories of the Tata Mona. This is their passion. Julia remembers the time a Suuhana visited her home, telling her she was surrounded by ancient Chamorro guards. Mrs. Agagi believes that the spirits of the ancient people often pass by her home, walking to the jungle behind her house where laddie stones can be found. She has a total of seven children. While two have since passed on, the death of her nine-year-old boy, she believes, was not due to natural causes. He went to your mother, my cousin came, and he really likes to go to the ranch. And he keeps uh, asking me, Mommy, can I go? I said, no, because Daddy don't want you guys to go without us. And he keeps pleading, please, Mommy, please. And my cousin keeps saying, let him go, let him go. So finally, you know, he left with them. That was Saturday night. And I went there to pick him up on Sunday. But that Saturday, more, no Saturday morning when he left, Saturday afternoon he went to the river with my nephew. And they were playing around and, you know, my nephew, how kids are, they, he keeps pushing my son's head down in the water. So my son keeps saying, help, help, help. And that's when he came home, he got sick. The ants bite his thing, and then that night it become big, and his stomach goes big and it's all swollen. But when I take him to the hospital, he died, and I, they asked me if I want, you know, to be given a topsy. I said yes, because I want to know what uh, causes that. And all they say in this report, I mean, in um, death certificate is uh, electrolyte imbalance. But we fold that swollenness and that mark over here in his arm, I mean, in his stomach. What My, was that mark? Huh? What was that mark? Like a uh, handprint, five fingers, and you know, the, your palm here. Like they're holding his side here, and the Surohanu cannot see it. Only me and my mom can see it. Julia says even before she took her son to the hospital, she knew something wasn't right, as her boy had a vision of a woman with an ancient Chamorro guard by her side. He was telling me, he woke me up around 3 o'clock in the morning, and he said, Mom, Mom, I said, yeah because I sleep with him and on the bed because he's sick. He said, wake up and see that beautiful lady. I said, what lady? He said, you know that uh, beautiful lady that's wearing a blue nice dress and she has a crown on her hair, on her head, and there's an ancient guard next to her too. I said, you know, I just want to find out if he's delirious already. I said, what in Shangard? And he said, you know that mom, the one that wears a hood and they're holding a lance? I said, what is lance? You know, just one, you know, try him. He said, I said, what is lance? He said, you know, mom, the, the one with the long stick with the arrow in the front? 
I said, are you okay, boy? He said, yeah. And he said, you know that beautiful lady is calling me to go disappearing act? I said, what? And he said, the beautiful lady is calling me to go and go disappearing act. Since her son's passing, she vividly remembers that day. But many of her children have actually encountered the Tata Mona. Mrs. Agagi tells us about this one instance where her 10-month-old baby, Julie, was taken by her cousins to play camp near a camichili tree at the side of their house. When Mrs. Agagi went to get Julie and bring her back into the house, her baby started crying. When she opened her eyes, it was as if someone had poked them. In another instance, she tells us about her four-year-old daughter who went out to the backyard with her little brothers to pick star apple. She was sick for three months after she was pinched by a tautamona. She only got better after she visited a suuhana. What's even more mysterious is the day I contacted Mrs. Agagi to share with us her tautamona tale. Something strange happened that very same night. Around maybe 11.30 or past 12, I was sleeping already because I always wakes up early in the morning. And around that time, like somebody's making a herb medicine in my bed. And I look around, I see nobody, but I keep smelling that very close to my nose. And then when I said, Guelu and Guela, are you the guy, the people that are trying to scare me? I said, I ask you guys already, re I'll respect you and you respect me. And then, you know, that thing just went away. Then when I woke up, I found this mark. When I took off my long sleeve shirt, I saw this mark. And when my daughter came up, I said, Mom, what happened to your arm? I said, I don't know, it just went like that. Then I told her, I said, last night I smelled like somebody's making a herb medicine in my bed. And she said, oh no, maybe you just bombed that somewhere. I said, no, because if I bomb this somewhere, it's going to be painful. But there's not, no pain at all, just the mark. The haunting and mysterious stories like Julia are not unusual on an island filled with legends and cultural beliefs in spirits of the ancient people that roam the jungles of Guam. For some who live in the village of Agate, they hear the pounding sounds of the ancient times, a tradition passed on by many generations and carried on by medicine healer Josefa Sutesa. I started when I was 27, when I come here to Agate. Now 86 years old, Josefa uses her powers of mixing herbal concoctions and massage therapy to ward off evil spirits and heal what many believe modern medicine can't. In the Chamorro language, they call her a suuhana. Many have come to her for help, believing some supernatural being may have harmed them. When people come over, they ask me if I could help them. So then, well, I just think, uh, I ask what happened. I, and they said that I was going out in the jungle last night and when I came home, I feel pain all on my back. Josefa is talking about the Tata Mona. Many describe them as spirits of the past or the people before us. You, you cannot see Tata Mona. But the spirit, eh, you, you could tell. So, what kind of spirit is it? Well, sometimes you, uh, sometime you you feel different if it's around you. It's, you feel different. You cannot tell, you cannot call nothing. Just she pretend like you don't know. But you feel like you, you hear her go out when you're really scared. Well, it's around you. I know that Dr. Moshe is around you, you be scared. You, you know that somebody's around you. Many articles have been written about the Tata Mona. They are described as the ghosts of the ancient people of Guam. 
In some cases, they are described as the native inhabitants of the island who were killed during the Spanish Chamorro War in the 1600s. Their spirits still walk the jungles. They are said to come in different forms, like the white lady, large, strong men, or children called duendes. The old people say that down at Adaloop, uh, oftentimes they could see men without heads walking along the reef. Professor of History and Micronesian Studies at the University of Guam, Dr. Dirk Ballendorf, has been teaching at the University of Guam for more than 20 years. While he says he does not believe in the Tata Mona, he doesn't discount the stories he's heard from his students. Spirits are very typical of the beliefs of many islanders. They have different names for them because islanders are superstitious. And when I first came to Guam, I, uh, I wasn't raised to believe in ghosts and Tauta Mona, but uh, my students, uh, many of whom from the islands, they, they do believe in them. And I can see now after many years being here that there's nothing wrong with believing them uh, in regard to what I teach, which is history. Uh, the uh, uh, belief in a Tao Timona does not interfere with teaching history, particularly history of the islands. And it probably helps people to be more careful about their own habits and lifestyles. For those who aren't careful, they often end up visiting Suruhanas like Certesa, seeking help or a cure for an illness that cannot be explained. I mixed it up and then I, I, I massaged. First night, I massaged them. Then the following day, I tell them to come in the morning. So when they come in the morning, then uh, I say uh, about the old chaplain. So when I ask her if, uh, how old is he feel, he said, well, last night I feel better and I sleep good last night. Before I cannot sleep, but last night when you massaged me, I feel much better. While many may say these stories are nothing but Chamorro folklore, or stories passed on to get a good scare out of someone. For Dr. Ballendorf, maybe they are, but he is willing to acquiesce as he himself has his own Tautamona tale. I don't see anything wrong with having beliefs like that. And do you believe in a thing? Well, I don't believe in Tautamona because I wasn't raised that way. Uh, but I've experience sometimes being alone or walking in the jungle, the feeling of people watching me, and maybe it was Tautamona. I no longer, uh, I no longer poo-poo those things because who knows? I don't know what I felt. I felt, it seemed like there was somebody watching me. Maybe there were people watching me, or maybe it was a ghost, I don't know, but I, I don't, I don't, waste too much time thinking about that now. I just acquiesce and accept that. Accept that there. There could be. Who am I to say? As for Certesa, the medicine healer, she is a believer warning people should be weary of the Tautamona. Not only is she frequented by many calling on her for help, but she herself has had many encounters with ancient spirits. Well, sometime at night time, maybe one, one o'clock, since I giving this to the people that talk to Mona, you know, sometime I, I kind of sleep at night time. From, I, I sleep early, and then by one o'clock, I could not go back to sleep. Something like somebody bothers me. What do they do? Well, it seems to me like, uh, you know, I feel like somebody's around there. Like one night, my, my niece sleep with me. So uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning, she wake up and wake me up. She said, Aunt, Aunt, Mama Pai, Mama Pai. I said, what, baby Lina? You, this old man in the, uh, walking out in the window. I said, don't, don't own the light, own the light. Own the light. So she, she's scared. She doesn't want to sleep with me anymore. Then the, the, there's another guy again from uh, the Dedus. He came, he came here about uh, maybe six o'clock, and somebody came with the, the little baby to be, give medicine. 
So when I give the medicine, maybe six o'clock, no, the, the man said that he, he tell me that uh, I how come that they, there's a man there in the in the window with a curly man. The cool said is this curly man. Might be your Dr. Mona, I said, maybe. So she's scared, she's that time she's scared to come here at night time. Whether you may think the tales of the Tata Mona are untrue or just storytelling from the island's Manumpka or elders, for Julia Agagi in Santa Rita, there is no doubt in her mind that you would be a believer if you came and spent some time at her house. People will probably watch this when they see this on TV. Mm -hmm. And they may go, you know, there is no such thing as a Tata Mona. Yeah, I know. Agagi, Mrs. Agagi, it's all in her mind. It's not true. <laughs> what would you say to those people? I, I just tell them, maybe you don't believe. Even me, I don't believe at first. But when it happened to me, I believe it. And I, nobody will come over here in front of my terrace to make her medicine at that hour. But I smell it. And I just said, Gwela and Gwelu, if you're the one that's trying to scare me, please don't because I ask you guys already. I'll respect you and you respect me. That thing just went away. Some people may say your children, your, your nine-year-old yes. son who got sick, mm -hmm. your, your daughter Julie, whose eyes were broken mm -hmm. down. They'll say that I'm cuckoo, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm 73 years old now. My legs is painful, but my mind is still, I can still remember way back when I was a small girl. So do you think Julia Agagi is crazy? Does Suruhana Josefa Certesa really have the power to heal? You've heard the perspective from Dr. Dirk Ballendorf from the University of Guam as he's willing to accept what his students believe. Either way, consider yourself warned. Until the next time, I'm Sabrina Solace.